In April of this same year, viewers are dragged into a totally terrifying world where a Catholic priest confronts a demonic presence that takes over a helpless child locked in his bed. Blood-chilling scenes flow on the screen, leaving a trail of fear and at the same time awe. However, the most chilling of all is that this Hollywood movie, with the incomparable performance of Russell Crowe, is inspired by a true story in the dark legacy of a man who became the last line of defense against the supernatural Father Gabriel Amorta. Amort, a name that makes even the bravest shudder, claimed to have banished the devil on countless occasions. A chilling record of 60,000 exorcisms in which he challenged the forces of evil. But his terrifying work was not limited to the shadows. He was a fierce critic of many things that seemed harmless to some, like the Harry Potter series and yoga, warning that they hid ominous connections with the underworld. The most terrifying of all is that Amort stated that sinister historical figures like Hitler or Stalin had been victims of demonic possession. His words cast a dark shadow over human history and its incomprehensible horrors. Even the classic movie The Exorcist, a story that has haunted entire generations, was rated by Amorth as substantially accurate, which only added one more chill to his entirely unsettling legacy. Father Gabriel Amorth, a fearless Italian priest born on May 1 of 1925 in the picturesque Modena in the Emilia-Romana region, and whose spirit bid farewell to this world on September 12 of the year 2016 in the majestic Rome in the heart of Lazio with a man whose life was marked by a truly extraordinary mission. In he became a renowned exorcist in the iconic Diocese of Rome and his name extended beyond the borders of faith due to his fascinating work. Captured in books that unveiled the mysteries of the struggle, against evil lectures that ignited restless minds and radio and television appearances that captured the attention of audiences from eager to know the secrets of exorcism, its religious and priestly forms. The life of Father Gabriel Amorth, born into a middle-class family in Italy, was marked by an extraordinary journey. In addition to his service in the church, he was a brave fighter in World War II, an experience that would shape his character and at the same time his determination. Already in the 1950s, the father was ordained as a member of the Order of the Pauline Fathers, committing to a life of religious service. However, his fate would take an unexpected turn in 86 when Cardinal Hugo Poletti asked him to join the chief exorcist of the Diocese of Rome as the church needed. Desperately, exorcists to then go on to work with Candido Amantini, a sick priest who would choose love to succeed him. This call plunged him into a world of the inexplicable and the supernatural. What followed was an astonishing chapter in the father's life, who found himself attending to an astonishing number of people, sometimes up to 80 each morning. His dedication and bravery stood out even more when he began performing exorcisms at the historic Holy Stairs Church in Rome. However, the intensity of these rituals, often filled with screams and spiritual struggles, scared away the faithful who were seeking peace and devotion in the same place. Faced with this situation, Gabriel Amorth was forced to move his office to the headquarters of his order, the Paulist Fathers. There he continued his tireless fight against the forces of evil, helping those who sought to free themselves from the bonds of demonic possession. The life of Father Gabriel Amos is a testament to dedication, faith, and courage in the fight against the unknown, leaving a legacy that endures in the memory of those who sought his help and in the history of the Catholic Church. The chilling accounts of the exorcisms performed by him reveal a world in the supernatural that defies reason and human understanding. On February 21, 1987, Amort performed his first exorcism, the first of over 60,000 as a thousand as I was telling you at the beginning that he would carry out throughout his life. 
His debut involved a 25-year-old peasant who, when going into a trance, would utter blasphemies in English, only for another strange voice from the depths of his being to translate those cursed words. On other occasions, he came face to face with equally terrifying manifestations. An illiterate woman, unable to read or write, hurled insults in a language that, after thorough investigation, was discovered to be Aramaic, an ancient Middle Eastern language. Amor had memorized the 21 rules that precede the rite of exorcism, rules that are found in the Rituale. Romanum of Pope Paul Vita, written in 1614, he was warned, however, that without these rules he would be doomed to failure in his fight against demonic forces. The main signs of possession, according to this ancient text, include the ability to speak unknown languages, the revelation of hidden facts, and the supernatural physical strength that surpasses the condition of the possessed. Amorth himself witnessed astonishing acts of strength, such as when an 11-year-old boy sent four burly men flying through the air, or when another 10-year-old boy lifted a heavy table over his head, feats that obviously defied all logic. However, the most terrifying symptom of all is the aversion to the sacred, such as the sudden fainting upon entering a church or the uncontrollable rage when seeing a priest. These are indications of a struggle between good and evil that manifests in ways that defy human understanding. One of the most chilling episodes narrated in his book My First Time Against Satan involves a possessed child. During the exorcism session, the child's eyes turned white and his head fell back onto the back of the chair. Then a chilling sensation of cold filled the room as the little one began to rise into the air. Half a meter from the chair suspended in a supernatural state for several minutes, these shocking accounts of Father Gabriel Emworth's exorcisms plunge us into a world of the unknown where the forces of good and evil intertwine in a terrifying dance that defies all rational explanation. His life and work are a testament to courage in the face of the incomprehensible. Until his last breath, Amorth warned about the cunning of the devil. He knew that the enemy always hid, lurking in the shadows, and that their main goal was to make humanity doubt their existence. It was a constant reminder that the battle between good and evil is a reality that should not be underestimated or ignored. In the 90s, he also founded the International Association of Exorcists and was its president until his retirement at 75 years old in the year 2000. He was declared honorary lifetime president of the association. In the last years of his life, he became a figure. Formidable in the fight against evil, performing an astonishing number of exorcisms. On his most intense days, he faced between 10 and 15 demonic possessions per day, a feat that forced him to take drastic measures to deal with the overwhelming demand. In his numerous exorcisms, Amor noticed an intriguing pattern. Nine out of ten were women. This puzzle baffled him and although he could never offer a definitive explanation, he speculated that the devil was seeking revenge on the Virgin Mary, I, whom he deeply venerated as a devotee of Our Lady of Fatima. Each exorcism was unique and obviously needless to say but terrifying experience. He would emerge from these spiritual battles with bruises on his body, the result of kicks, punches, bites, and occasionally spit, evidence of the fury of the dark forces he was facing. One day, an American priest asked Amor if he was afraid of Satan. His response, full of courage and determination, was a firm, I am not, and it is he who should be afraid of me and all those who live in Jesus Christ. His words obviously reflect the conviction and unshakable faith that guided him in his tireless fight against evil. So, over decades, Amor performed an astonishing number of exorcisms and treated at least 100 people who were experiencing absolute demonic possessions. However, he maintained a realistic perspective and admitted that in many cases, the underlying problems of the individuals were of a psychological nature and would have been better addressed by mental health professionals. Only in about a hundred cases, according to his own estimates, did he come across genuine cases face to face with the demon. 
Amorth also emphasized the importance of not confusing demonic possession with common mental or physical illnesses. Symptoms of possession included violent headaches and stomach cramps, but he always urged people to seek medical attention before resorting to an exorcism. His words serve as a reminder that the line between the supernatural and the earthly can be thin and that it is crucial to approach each case with caution and discernment. In this way, Gabriel remained a figure of authority and compassion in his quest to help those who were caught in the struggle between good and evil. In the year 2020, the Vatican officially recognized the Global Brotherhood of Love of Demon Expellers and Breakers, an initiative aimed at raising awareness among other priests about the dramatic reality of exorcism. Similarly, Although Pope Benedict XVI never officially performed an exorcism, it is known that his predecessor, Pope John Paul II, carried out at least three during his pontificate. Gabriel Amor claimed that John Paul II was a powerful exorcist and made the following comment. He fought many times against Satan. In fact, in a recent interview, Pope Francis spoke openly about the role of the devil in people's lives including religious leaders like himself. He acknowledged that the devil seeks to attack everyone regardless of their position in the church or in society and highlighted how Jesus himself faced Satan's temptations. These statements by Pope Francis shed light on the Catholic Church's perception of exorcism and the recognition of the existence of evil in this world as well as the need to address these situations with discernment and caution. Russell Crowe, who plays Father Gabriel in The Pope's Exorcist, and Doug Belgrat, one of the producers of this, have shed light on The Exorcist as a truly singular figure. Belgrat in particular writes him as an iconoclast, a rebel in the deepest sense of the word, a man with a fearless mind and unbreakable courage who dedicated his entire existence to alleviating the suffering of the afflicted, who even questioned the Catholic Church and the dark things they carried out behind the backs of believers. Father Gabriel, in his defiant and reckless rituals, used a combination of sacred objects, going back a bit to where we were, for example, crucifixes, to anointed oils and holy water accompanied by a prayer book and a purple stole that he usually placed on the possessed person, he faced the abyss with courage and conviction. I repeat to you in conclusion, Father Gabriel Amorth was a brave and controversial figure who dedicated his life to the fight against evil through exorcisms, although his opinions and statements generated controversy. His commitment and unwavering faith in the fight against the unknown are a testament to his humanitarian dedication. His legacy endures as a reminder of the possible existence of a world beyond our understanding and the importance of approaching such phenomena with prudence and discernment.